In this video you will learn what is Angular Firebase authentication, what problems does it solve and how to implement it correctly inside Angular project. So first of all what is Firebase? This is a SaaS from Google which allows us to implement our project with skipping things like backend or database. For example in one of the previous videos I showed how to use Firebase, create data there and use them inside Angular application. Now here we are doing the next step, we want to implement authentication by using Firebase. It is also possible, which actually means we are just writing our code inside Angular. We don't need any backend or a database. It will be all done through Firebase and it is an extremely easy way to implement your project without knowledge that you might not have. Additionally to that, authentication inside Firebase is done in the completely correct way and you are getting things like sending emails, registration, login in, restoring your password and much more. So let's do this now. Your first step is to create an account inside Firebase. As you can see here, I already have an account and here you can see my Firebase project. If you just created an account, you don't have any. Now here we can click add project and create here whatever project you want. For example, let's create a project Angular Firebase app. I'm hitting here continue and we're getting a question do we need Google Analytics or not. I want to disable it and just click create project. As you can see I got a message your Firebase project is ready. We can click continue and now we're inside our project. And here we are interested in the build tab on the left and there is part which is authentication. This is exactly what we want to do. So what we are getting here is authentication where we can manage our users and do lots of different stuff. We are clicking get started and here as you can see it supports lots of different providers like for example email and password, Google, Microsoft, Twitter, whatever you prefer. In this video we will focus just on email and password, but essentially you can really easy configure any of them because they are all are going through Firebase and you don't really need to bother with correct implementation. But just to show you how it works, let's select here email and password. And here as you can see we want to enable email and password authentication, but we don't really need email links or passwordless sign in. This is why here just this toggle is important and I am clicking save. As you can see now we are on the second tab sign in method and here we have our providers and our email password provider is enabled. As you can see it is even possible to implement multi-factor authentication but we don't need that. After this we can click on tab users and here are all users which are registered through Firebase authentication. Most importantly here we won't see some database or different tables, we will see some raw data of our users. Let's set here one user just for testing. So here I want to write for example email foo at gmail.com and password from 1 to 8. We are clicking here add user and this is our user. So we can see here identifier, provider, it was not sign in and this is our user ID. This is enough for us. Now we can start using Firebase inside our Angular project. So let's look on our project. As you can see here I have just two routes, login and register. So on login we are getting email and password and on register we are getting username, email and password. And also we have here a span logout. Now let's look on our code. As you can see here inside source, we are getting two routes. First of all, login and register. And inside our app component, we are getting two links to slash login and slash register. And there is a span with click logout. Inside our app component, we don't do anything. This is just logout with console log. And now let's look on our login. Here we have just a reactive form with nothing else. And this is our TS file. You can see here that we have a form and on submit doesn't do anything. And register is exactly the same HTML and our component with on submit register. So this is a completely empty project where we want to set up Firebase authentication. And our first step here is to install our dependency. This is why here let's write npm install at angular fire. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have lots of advanced courses on different web technologies where we create real applications and prepare for the interviews. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's jump back into the video. 
and this is an Angular library which is supported by Core Team, so we can always be sure that it is up to date. Our next step here is to configure correctly Angular Fire, and we must do that inside our app config TS. And what we need here, we need to prepare our Angular Fire config. This is why let's jump back to our Firebase project, and here we want to click on Project Overview. As you can see, we can start by using Firebase in different places like iOS, Android, and web. We're clicking on the web, and here we need to create a web application. For example, Angular Fire app. We don't need to check this button to set up Firebase hosting, I will just click register app. And here we are getting information that we need to install Firebase package, this is not what we need. What we really need is to copy this Firebase config and paste it here inside our app config TS. So our Firebase config is ready, now inside our providers, we want to import two providers from the Fire, and we are doing it by calling import providers from, and we are providing an array inside, and first of all it must be provide Firebase app, where inside we are providing an anonymous function, which must call initialize app, and inside we are providing our Firebase config. This line is needed for any Firebase application. But additionally to that, we want to use authentication from Firebase. This is why here let's write provide auth, and again inside we are providing a function, and it must return get auth, which we are getting again from the Firebase. So as you can see here, our imports are coming from Angular Fire auth and Angular Fire app. So we finished with setting up Firebase inside our application, now let's use it. And the first thing that I want to do is to create new interface for our user that we want to register or login with. And this is why inside our app I want to create user interface.ts. And here let's export our interface, which will be a user interface. And here we have two different fields. First of all is our email, which is a string. And secondly, we need here a username, which is also a string. The next thing that I want to do is to create a service which will work with Firebase. This is why inside our app, let's create a new file and it will be auth.service.ts. This is why here we need to write injectable as always, and we are using provide it in root, and here let's export our class which is an auth service. And the first thing that we need to get here is our Firebase instance with all credentials that we wrote. And in order to do that, we can write Firebase auth. And here we are using inject keyword. And we want to inject here auth that we are getting from Angular Fire auth. And now we can try and create, for example, a register method. So our register method will get an email, which is a string, then username, which is also a string, and password, which is also a string which essentially means our register has all fields from our register form. And here back what I want to get is observable of void, which essentially means when we're working with Firebase, I am not expecting to get back a user and you will see in a second why. Second important point to remember is that Firebase does not return for us observables, it returns for us promises. For me, it is not that comfortable to work with promises inside Angular, this is why I really like to convert them back to observables. This is why what we can do here is we know that we are getting back a promise from Firebase, and we want to call here create user with email and password. And as you can see, we can both import them from Firebase auth and Angular Fire auth. I prefer to use Angular Fire auth because this is an Angular wrapper for it. This is why here what we must provide is the reference to our Firebase auth. This is exactly what we injected here on the top, and this is exactly where we have our credentials. And after this, we must provide here an email and a password. But as you can see here, we didn't use username at all. Why is that? Because it is not possible to provide a username inside creating. We just provide an email and password. This is why in order to provide a username, we must, after we create a user, update a username inside our record. And in order to do that, we can use then, and we're getting access to the response. And now here we can call a function which is called update profile. And inside we're providing response.user, this is exactly the user that we created, comma, and here is what we're updating. And we want to update the field display name, and here we want to assign a username inside. And as you can see here, it returns for us a promise void. This is completely fine for us, we're not expecting any data. 
but most importantly, if this promise is fulfilled, then we are sure that user was created and the username is set there. This is why after, let's return from, and I'm providing inside the promise. And this is exactly what I said previously, I really don't like to work with promises inside Angular, this is why I convert the promise to subscription. So our register function is ready, let's use it now. I want to jump inside our register component, and here what we want to do is import our auth service that we just created by injecting auth service. Now inside our on submit, first of all we want to get a value of our form. This is why here let's create a property raw form where we are assigning this dot form get raw value. Now we can just call this method from our service dot register. So first of all inside we must provide an email. It is our raw form dot email. Then we need a username so raw form dot username, and our password is raw form dot password. Now here we can write subscribe and we don't get back anything at all, but we can call here this dot router dot navigate by URL and provide here a slash, which essentially means if we successfully register the user, we want to redirect him to our home page. Let's check if it's working. Here I will type a username bar, then an email bar at gmail.com and then password. I'm hitting sign up. And as you can see, we were directly redirected to our home page. Now let's open our list of the users inside Firebase. And as you can see, now I'm getting here not just a single user foo, but a user bar also. And it was successfully registered inside Firebase, which essentially means our registration code works just fine. But actually we have a problem. Let's click on register and just hit sign up. And as you can see here, I am getting an error of Firebase owls invalid error, which essentially means we have an uncaught error because we don't handle when we are getting some validation. And we can easily tune that inside our subscribe, because essentially here we wrote just success case, but no error case. What we can do here, we can provide inside our subscribe an object, and then as a key we can have next, this is our success, and we can also create after an error case. And inside error case we are getting the full error, and what I want to do, I want to store inside this error message an error.code. This is exactly what we saw inside console. But we don't have a property error message, so let's create it. It is an error message, which is either string or null, and by default I am assigning here null which essentially means normally we don't have an error message. If we have some validation, then we are storing here an error message. Now we can jump inside our HTML and render this error message. So here after each one, I can write an if condition for our error message and inside it will be just a div with the property error message. Let's check if it's working. I'm hitting here sign up and as you can see on the top, we're getting a div auth invalid email. Obviously you can make it red or make it nicer or render some message instead, but this is how you handle your validation. Now it is time to implement login into the Firebase. This is why I am back inside our service TS and I want to create here a login method. And inside login we are first of all getting our email, which is a string, and then we are getting a password, which is also a string. And back we want to get an observable of void, so exactly like for our register. And here I need a promise and we want to call sign in with email and password. And inside we must provide first of all our Firebase auth and then an email that we provided inside and the password. And here I want to write return from promise. So here we are calling sign in with email and password and it must sign in this user and return it. But as you can see here we are getting an error, observable user credential is not assignable to type observable void which actually means this promise returns for us user credential. We don't really want that, this is why what I can do here, I can just write then, and here I can return an empty function. In this case we won't get anything back from our promise, and now TypeScript does not scream. So let's do exactly the same stuff inside our login. I don't really want to retype everything, so let's first of all copy an error message from register to our login. Now let's fully copy on submit an error message and write it inside our login. And here on the top we also must inject our our service. 
So here we have our on submit, we are reading our raw form, which has an email and password, and we are calling here not register, but login that we just created, and we are providing inside an email and raw password, but not a username. And here again we have a validation, so an error and next, and we are navigating the user to the home page when we successfully logged in. Let's check if it's working. I am clicking here on login, and I will use the user that I created at the beginning. So it is foo at gmail.com and the password. And as you can see, I was successfully redirected to the home page, which actually means I am logged in. And now it is time to talk why I wrote inside register and login that we are getting back an observable of void. As you can see, we don't have any code that stores the token of the user or the user itself inside our application. And this is done so on purpose, because actually Firebase allows us to subscribe to user data through the stream and get them on every single update. This is why what I want to do, I want to jump back inside our OS service, and here I want to get a user with dollar by calling a user function, and inside we must provide this dot firebase out, which essentially means it will return for us a user data. If we are not logged in, then it will be null. If we are logged in, then we will have the whole user inside. But this is not all, additionally I want to create a signal, which we really will use across the whole application. I don't really want to use this full user, because it has lots of different methods and data inside. I want to create here my own current user signal, and I'm creating here a signal with three different parameters. It might be user interface that we already created, or it will be null, or it will be undefined. And by default I want to set here undefined. And you might ask, why do we have three states and not two? We are either locked in or not locked in, so it is either user interface or null. But actually not, we want an undefined by default before we fetch the user, because essentially it takes time to get current user, which means we don't really want to have some weird blinking when we don't really know if the user is locked in or not. Now I want to jump inside our app component, because this is exactly the place which will be called on any page. And what we need to inject here is our out service, so we are calling inject of out service. Now here I want on init, and let's create our ng on init function. So what we want to do here, we want to subscribe to our user dollar that we will get from Firebase itself. So here we can write subscribe, and we are sure that we are getting here a user. It is either null or our full user. This is why here I want to check if we are getting a user, then I want to set our signal, so it will be our service dot current user dot set, and we can provide just fields that we want. It is our email, and we are getting it from user dot email, and secondly our username, and it is our user dot display name. But as you can see, we are getting here an error string or null is not assignable to type string because our user email can be null, and the same is true for the display name. But essentially it is not true, because we are sure that we set them to create a user, we set both email and display name. This is why I put here an exclamation mark, because we are sure that they are there. So this is the case when we got the user, but what do we do when we didn't get a user? In this case we want to set our signal to null, because we know we are not logged in. Which essentially means the idea is that we are not storing user in our application, our registration or login in. It works similar to Redux, we are just dispatching that something happened, and then through this stream, our service user, we will know when user is logged in or not. Let's check if it's working. This is why after all this code, we can simply console log our this our service dot current user with round brackets. And let's check how it looks in browser. I am reloading the page and we are getting the user with email foo and username null, which is essentially is correct, because this is the only user that we created through this add user and where we don't have a username. But here is an extremely important question. I am reloading the page and we are getting this user. How it is working at all? We didn't store a token from Firebase inside our local storage or cookie. And if you will check here inside the application, inside local storage, you won't find anything. The same is going about session storage and cookies, there is nothing inside. 
because here, as you can see inside IndexedDB, Firebase stores some stuff. You can open here a database and here are some values and here is Firebase local storage where we have an authentication key. And essentially this key is what Firebase uses to authenticate our user. Let's check how it works. I'm jumping to network and reload the page. And as you can see here, we're getting a request which is called account lookup and here we have this unique key. So this key is being stored in my IndexedDB by Firebase. We don't really need to do anything inside our Angular application. It happens automatically. But this is exactly how we're getting this user back to our application. So now we can fix links inside our app component and after this implement our logout. What we can do here around our div, we can write an if condition and if our our service dot current user equals null, then we want to render this div. If we have full current user, we want to render this div with logout. As you can see after page reload, we just see our logout link. It happens because we updated our signal here and we're rendering just this part. But now in order to test this part, we must implement our logout. This is why let's jump back inside our, our service and create here a logout function. So again, we will get an observable of void back. And here I want to get a promise by calling sign out function. And inside we must just provide this Firebase out and nothing more. And here I want to return from promise, which actually means this single line will log us out. So now we can go back inside our app component TS yes, and here inside our logout, we can just call this our service dot logout. Let's check if it's working. Here I can click logout and as you can see, we're not logged in anymore and our user is null. This is why we see these links. Now here I can click login and type, for example, our bar user. So bar at gmail.com and the password. And as you can see, we're getting here our email bar and our username. So for the sake of clarity, let's also render a username here inside our div. So I will write our service dot current user with round brackets, question mark, username. As you can see in the browser, we successfully rendered bar logout. But if it looks for you, if Firebase is too much and you really just want to learn how to implement authentication inside Angular with normal GVT API, make sure to check this video also.